Today I'm going to show you guys a quick tip for recovering details in the darkest of the dark parts of your photos. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn seven days a week where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. Today we had a cool episode. Basically what we're doing is we have a lot of people have been typing in, you know, in the comments lately they've been asking. Um, I've been taking pictures and sometimes like the darks, like the shadows turn out too dark and I can't see any detail in there and like I, I need a, like a quick way to bring back some detail in the shadow levels. And if you guys have been taking pictures, you know this happens all the time. Like the darks will go a little bit dark and you like, you, you can't see what's going on, especially if you're photographing someone with like black or really dark gray clothing on and things like that. You want to get that detail. So today I'm going to show you a really tip, quick tip on how you can actually bring that detail back while keeping your highlights and the rest of the image the same. So here's the image we're going to be editing. This is by Isaac Alvarez. Really, really great photo and he's one of our contest winners from last week. Every single week we give away Flurn Pro Tutorials for free to a bunch of contest winners. You can enter them on flurn.com. So what we're going to do, I'm going to create a duplicate of our background layer. So we've got our background. I'm going to hit Command J to create a duplicate of that. And now we're going to go to Image and then we're going to go down here to Adjustments. And I'm going to go over here to where it says shadows slash highlight. Now there's not an adjustment layer for this. You have to do this directly onto a layer. So shadow slash highlights. All right. Now there are a couple of really nice tips when you're using this shadow slash highlight. It comes default like this, where it says like, you know, you just adjust your amount and it's like, you know, it doesn't give you a whole lot of options. I'm going to click on the show more options and show you guys how to use this. Now, my one thing about this tool is I really don't use much with the highlights. I'll show you that in just a little bit, but mo mostly I stick with the shadows here. So let's just bring all these things down to zero and then we'll kind of show you how this works and then show you what a difference it makes. So bringing the detail up in the shadows, basically it's going to bring up, you can see the brightness in the shadows just a little bit as we're going along, but it keeps our highlights basically in the same place. If I bring this up too far, it starts to look weird and that's where we want to bring up our tonal width and our radius a little bit. And this is going to give you a little bit of like that HDR effect, right? So if you bring your radius too low, it looks a little bit more natural, but you can't bring your amount up. So bringing our radius up a little bit, is going to give us really that nice HDR effect. There we go. I'm going to bring up tonal range, which is basically going to include a little bit more of my highlights as well. And then we can kind of adjust our amount, which is basically how much it's going to brighten it. So between the three of those, that's where you're kind of like looking for the sweet spot. Like that's where you're going to want to say like, okay, now I can actually see a lot of this nice detail here in the shadows. See all that? Basically, we couldn't see any of that before. And um, this one tool is kind of like bringing it that out with, while keeping the highlights in place, which is really nice. Now, if some of the highlights are too bright, you can kind of bring this up. There we go. Which basically knocks your highlights down a little bit. I'm going to bring up the tonal width and the radius on that just a little bit as well. So what this is going to do is it's going to keep your highlights from being too bright. I generally keep the radius a little bit lower on this one because it, it tends to handle the highlights just a little bit better. So here in the adjustments, color correction and midtone contrast, unless you're really having to push this far, like if it's um, like deep, here the darks that we're bringing up are like black, right? They're like, it's a, a black uh, dress or whatever top that is. Um, but if you're like, if the brights, the darks that you need to bring up are like uh, you're in a forest and it's like really dark and green and something like that, you'll probably have to bring this color correction up a little bit. You can see it just like it saturates those darks a little bit more. Bringing it down, you can see the difference that that makes, right? So here, because we're working with basically neutral colors, this really do doesn't matter as much. But if you were working with something that's colored, you'd want to bring this color correction up a little bit more as well. All right, so we're going to hit OK there. And we're going to show you, here's the before and the after. That super simple, super simple trick that really brings up the amount of shadow detail in these images. So what you can do with this, you can leave it just like this. You can say like, okay, that looks good. I want to leave it like this. Or you can put a layer mask. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask on this. And now basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint white over top of the dress. There we go. And a little bit over the skin as well. All right, so you can also use this in just certain areas to just bring more detail into those areas, like here in the hair and things like that as well. Maybe a little bit on the face and the skin as well, but we'll keep the background generally pretty dark. 
All right, maybe give her a slight like halo or something like that right around there. Okay, so a really cool way to bring that shadow up and then I just basically put a layer mask on there so we can choose just where we want it because that's such a cool texture on there and I couldn't see it basically at all before. So doing this is gonna really, really help out. All right, and now I feel like, I just wanna give you this other cool bonus tip because it's gonna look really cool on this image and um, it won't take a whole lot of time. So this is not related to the bringing the darks up, but this is another cool bonus tip. So I really like this rim light that we've got going on. This basically like this nice warm color here that's showing up in the hair. I think it looks great. So I wanna kind of bring that up a little bit. Like I wanna enhance it and maybe give myself like a little bit of like a lens flare or something like from the right. that I think it's, it's just gonna play nicely with this image. So what I'm gonna do is hit G for the gradient tool. Okay, so I'm on my gradient tool. I'm gonna to click here on my gradient editor and I'm gonna choose the foreground to transparent gradient. We're gonna hit okay. Okay, and then here I'm gonna choose my radial gradient. So you can use a linear or a radial. Okay, now I'm gonna hold alt or option and I'm gonna just choose a color that's right here in the hair. So if I just click like right there, it's just gonna make a, a little uh, gradient basically going from my foreground color, which I just chose to transparent. So that's what we're doing. So basically, I'm gonna click right out here and make a larger version of this, which is gonna look like a lens flare, but it's cool because it's the same color as that highlighter in your hair, so it's gonna blend in and it's gonna make it look a lot more realistic. All right, now we just need to do one more thing and that's gonna help it blend in to the image. We're gonna put a layer mask on there and then I'm gonna to go to image and then down to apply image, okay? And when I go to apply image, basically what it does is it puts a snapshot of the image on the layer mask and does a great job blending. I use this anytime I'm adding like lighting effects to an image, apply image is a wonderful way to do it. So you can leave this, those settings just as they are. Merge, multiply, RGB, all the stuff, just leave exactly how they come default, hit okay and you're good to go. So let's just turn this off and on. Just gives it like a little bit more style and um, I'm, I'm a big fan of these like lighting effects and things like that. So not a whole long time. We've taken basically what was, you know, like a, a quite a bit of like dark detail, which this awesome, awesome image. Let's just show you guys the before and the after. So let's uh, hit F for full screen. I'm gonna hit Command Zero to size it up and we'll show you there's the before and the after. Again, before and the after. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. If this episode seemed like a little advanced or anything was a little bit difficult or you just wanna get a better grasp of Photoshop in general, be sure to click on the screen now to check out our Photoshop 101 tutorial. It's over three and a half hours long and it basically covers everything you guys need to know to get started in Photoshop. It's awesome. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay updated because we make free Photoshop videos every single week. As well as let us know in a comment right down below anything you guys would like to learn because that's how we that's how we come up with our episodes here on Florin.com. We read your guys' comments and we get your images and then we go, oh, that will make an awesome episode. We're gonna teach people how to do that for free. Thanks again, guys, and we'll flurn you later. We'll flurn you later. I'll just flurn you all over again. Later, bye. Flurn. So this is the image we're working on today. It's by I... <laughs> Photoshop and photography fun. Today we're a... Uh... I didn't like that. Florin.com where we make I didn't like that one either. It's fine, no big deal. 